Hey, what's up guys? And it's time to expose the secrets regarding the flagship beyond the 10th anniversary, the Samsung Galaxy S11. We've got a lot of info and leaks and surprisingly, most of it is actually directly from Samsung. So if you're waiting for the Galaxy S11, it's time to dive deep and let's get right into it. So with the Galaxy S11, Samsung will be upgrading everything from design to the display technology to the GPU to the camera. Everything is coming new. First up is the LPDDR5X RAM. Now this is fairly new. Samsung has officially started mass producing the industry's first LPDDR5 RAM. This RAM maximizes the potential of 5G and AI features in future flagships. It's also said to be 30% efficient and about 1.3% faster than the current RAM standard. Standard. This, without a doubt, will go inside of the Galaxy S11 as well as a lot of other Android phones next year. The Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 chip will have support for DDR5 RAM, so will the upcoming Exynos and Kirin chipsets. Samsung will be focusing on massive internal gains. They are all set to introduce 5 nanometer process node in their consumer devices by 2020. With 5 nanometer process node, Samsung will be able to pack more transistors per unit area. This will make the next Exynos chip considerably faster and power efficient. However, it is believed that 5 nanometer chip will most likely go inside of the Galaxy Note 11, whereas Samsung could use 6 nanometer for S11 which is still an improvement over the Galaxy S10, but they could also go with 5 nanometer all the way. Especially now with Apple expected to bring 5 nanometer chip in 2020 as well. So Samsung won't let that happen. They can let Huawei win at things, but not Apple. Definitely not Apple. So expect a 5 nanometer chip Exynos beast next year. Speaking of Exynos processor, Samsung will be bringing some major improvements to GPU as well. They are actually partnering with AMD to utilize the Radeon graphics technology in their mobile chipsets. It is very likely that we'll see an AMD mobile GPU for the first time inside a smartphone and that phone will be Galaxy S11. Samsung needs a big graphics update. They use the Melee GPU which Huawei also uses and it doesn't give Samsung's Exynos processor an edge over the competition. Especially now with Apple bringing some major GPU gains with Apple A13 this year, Samsung has to catch up and they need AMD. With all of this, Samsung will also be applying its brand new NPU chip that's officially been reported and is coming with improved algorithm. It is efficient and about 8 times faster than the current NPU chip that we have. Along with the Exynos variant, the Galaxy S11 will also come with the latest and greatest Snapdragon 865. Qualcomm fabricates their chips from third-party sources, mainly TSMC. They're also stepping up their game just like Samsung. They're going hard on 5 nanometer and even the research for 3 nanometer chip process has started according to the source DSMC will start its mass production of 5 nanometer chips in 2020 that means Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 could get a major upgrade and same goes for the Apple's A series processors as well. Both Exynos and Qualcomm 865 chips will come with built-in 5G support. The improved X55 modem is said to be smaller in size and more efficient compared to the X50 modem. Because of its small size, it's going to be integrated inside the chip itself. Hence, it will take less space so 5G Galaxy S11 could probably get even more juice. On top of all of this, Samsung will be utilizing the new RM Cortex cores. The Cortex A77 processor design will have up to 20% improved performance gains over the last Cortex A76 chip. There will also be 60% increase in machine learning performance. So you're getting gains, some serious gains with the next generation of Samsung Galaxy S model. Samsung will also be bringing the camera upgrade of the century. Since the Galaxy S11, Samsung has used the same camera sensor size, which is 1.4 micron meter. They have made improvements, and I mean a lot of improvements to the sensor, but the size is still the same. With competitors like Huawei already stepping up their game, Samsung is still stuck with that same old thing. But finally, Samsung is changing that with the Galaxy S11. They're about to bring a much needed larger sensor size to really improve the image. Not only that, we could see a huge bump in the megapixel count as well. Yes, next year will be the year of megapixel war. According to IS Universe, there will be a phone next year with 100 megapixel camera and another phone with 10x optical zoom. Samsung has already introduced its 64 megapixel ISO cell Brian GW1 sensor. According to Samsung, it has a 
whopping HDR range of 100 decibels. The image sample out of this sensor looks really, really sharp. It takes a lot of size, but it's going to produce some really good detail. This sensor is already coming to some mid-range phones, so we can expect something similar or even better with Samsung Galaxy S11. And something that Huawei has already done twice, which is the killer zoom setup, Samsung has to, and I mean has to bring the zoom camera on the S11, which they have prepared already. It is smaller in size compared to the competition, but they decided not to use it with the Note 10. So they are pretty much reserving all the good stuff with the S11. The five times optical zoom along with the bigger sensor size and more megapixel equals a serious mega camera upgrade. Now, if you look at the past pattern, when Samsung brings some major changes with a generation, the generation after that usually have some meaningful internal gains, improved cameras, but the design remains the same. But this time Samsung will be bringing design changes as well. Out comes the full screen 2.0 design. This is another thing that Samsung scrapped this year and they let Huawei win. The Mate 30 Pro will be the first phone to have this design and after that we're gonna see Vivo Next 3 but Samsung will almost certainly utilize this design on the S11, so expect it to be super curved, like extremely curved for maximum screen to body ratio. As for the hole, we could see it in the middle of the display. It could get even smaller than the one on the Note 10. And for those who don't like curved screen phones, don't worry, you will see a flat screen Galaxy S11 e version, which will be smaller in size and of course, cheaper. So Samsung will still be bringing three flagship phones in 2020. Now Samsung has scrapped one more thing this year which is a really killer feature that OnePlus 7 Pro has and that is 90 hertz refresh rate. This needs to happen especially now with Apple looking to bring 120 hertz refresh rate to their iPhone in 2020. This was an active conversation within Samsung but they decided not to use it. Samsung has probably learned their lesson and they will be using higher refresh rate to 90 hertz or maybe even 120 hertz if we're lucky to truly rival the next year's iPhone model. And let's not forget the shocking design change that Samsung was about to make with the Note 10. According to Ice Universe and multiple sources, Samsung was indeed making a buttonless Galaxy Note 10, but they later scrapped it because of some issues. Samsung was replacing the physical keys with touch and gesture based input. They were working closely with a company named NDT. It's a Chinese manufacturer of pressure sensitive force touch sensors similar to the 3D touch on the iPhone. It was supposed to replace the physical keys. With the lack of physical keys, the Galaxy Note 10 would have been extremely minimal along with the best water and dust resistance. But again, Samsung decided not to do it and this could actually happen with the S11. Especially now with the full screen 2.0 design where we have extended curved sides, Samsung could actually remove the physical keys and add 3D touch controls. Again, this is going to be experiment and if successful, we could see the first keyless Galaxy S flagship phone. Now with all the changes, software has to be upgraded as well. So One UI 2.0 is coming with Android Q. We're gonna see it on the Note 10. But by the time the Galaxy S11 comes, we're gonna see One UI 2.1 based on Android Q right out of the box. Quite honestly, we don't know any of the feature yet, so do expect some surprises there. And last but not the least, we could see some faster charging gains. Samsung has created power delivery controllers based on USB Type-C that can deliver up to 100 watts of fast charging compared to the 45 watts of fast charging which currently the Galaxy Note 10 family supports. According to the stats, this can charge a 4000 mAh battery from 0 to 100% in about 17 minutes. Xiaomi also announced their 100 watts of fast Fast charging setup so next year we could see a hundred watts fast charging phone from either Samsung or Xiaomi. Now in my honest opinion, Samsung might not bring 100 watts of fast charging with Galaxy S11, but they could improve the fast charging speeds even further to 55 watts, which is something Huawei has already introduced with Mate X, or even going to 60 watts or 65 watts of fast charging, just improving a little bit till we reach this 100 watts of fast charging speeds. And that's about it. That is all that we know regarding the Galaxy S11 as of now. The next year be is really coming with so many changes along with some meaningful design changes such as the higher refresh rate but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below out of all the stuff that we talked about which is the most favorite one does all of this look exciting to you are you going to wait for the s11 and skip whatever samsung puts out this year let me know and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out